So uh, we all are aware uh, the levels of prevention. We have four levels of prevention: primary, primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. So uh, these preventions we all uh, must have read in our MBBS days in uh, our SPM classes. So where does this screening comes in these levels? Like what what does the screening do actually? Is it a primordial prevention? No, uh, because primordial prevention is preventing before the onset of risk factors. Okay. Then where does it come? It comes in primary prevention. Primary prevention is if we know certain group of people who are at risk of developing particular cancer, then we target those population and we advise them for the prevention. We screen those patients for any identification of new disease. So, cancer screening comes under primary prevention. So, uh, in general, in the world, uh, we screen. Uh, we don't screen uh, for all of the cancers because it is very difficult uh, screening for cancers in most of the cancers. Like uh, if you take most of the upper GI cancer, which is highly difficult to screen those patients. Like in, uh, if you have a esophagus or stomach, it is highly difficult for screening those patients. But uh, there are certain cancers where the screening is found to be useful. It is found to be possible, actually. It is found to be possible and it is found to be useful. So the most commonly screened cancers are breast cancer and cervical cancer in, around the world. Uh, there are no uh, fixed protocols uh, for cancer screening in India, but uh, wow. most of the Western countries, they follow the screening protocols very uh, regularly at uh, multiple levels. Uh, but in India, we don't have uh, a, a institutionalized policies for cancer screening. Even in the centers like uh, the Tata Memorial Hospital or all India Medical Sciences, we don't have a particular like... Uh, proper uh, cancer screening modules. So um, after uh, breast and cervical cancer, uh, colorectal cancer is one, one more cancer. Uh, cancer screening is popular and uh, lung cancer screening per se uh, it is not so much popular but it is uh, an upcoming uh, field of cancer screening most of the western countries they now they have guidelines for uh, screening of lung cancer patients uh, for screening of the patients for lung cancer i should say so uh, here, if you see this graph, uh, here it is clearly seeing the, the numbers on the x-axis is the age of the patient. So when should the screening start and when should it end? So uh, if you see our lung cancer, it is around uh, 50 to 60, it should start and should end by 8, 80 years. So now we will discuss uh, in detail about lung cancer screening. So what is the importance? What is the importance of lung cancer screening? Why should we screen for lung cancer? If you see the statistics of uh, world cancer uh, data, or if you see the statistics of Indian cancer patients, so as a single site, lung cancer is the most common uh, cancer among all cancer types in the world. As of today, lung cancer is the most common uh, cause of cancer and most common cause of cancer-related deaths in the world and in US. In India, uh, in males, lung cancer is still considered as the most common cancer. Although if you, if you uh, add all the sites of head and neck, then it will become first because of the prevalence of oral uh, tobacco chewing uh, in our country. But uh, if you look as a single site, the lung cancer is still uh, the most common cancer among males in India. So uh, it is very important to uh, screen the patients for this type of cancer to prevent early death. So what is the most common risk factor for lung cancer? That is smoking. So it is estimated that 90% of all lung cancers are caused due to either uh, active or passive smoking. 
So, uh, what are the other risk factors for lung cancer? So, the, the, uh, as we all know, that smoking is a uh, major risk factor for can, uh, lung cancer, and, uh, and smokers are uh, uh, said to be 20 times higher uh, risk. Uh, said to have 20 times higher risk of developing lung cancer than the non-smokers. But uh, it is also seen that lung cancer incidence increases with increase in age. So the median age of lung cancer diagnosis is around 70 years. So generally lung cancer patients have poor prognosis and uh, the overall survival across all the types of lung cancers. The overall survival, the overall five-year uh, survival rate is around 20%, which is much, much uh, less compared to many uh, other cancers of uh, head and neck thorax. So, however, uh, if we can identify the patients in early stage of lung cancer, then the survivals will increase dramatically. You see, if you see the data, the 10-year survival, the 5-year survival of a stage 1 and stage 2 lung cancer is anywhere around 70 to 80 percent. So, what are the methods of screening we can use uh, to detect lung cancers in early stage? So, uh, people experimented with different techniques like they, uh, they thought they can uh, screen the patients with just a simple chest, chest x-ray. But uh, if you see just X-ray, uh, yeah, nowadays um, uh, younger, uh, clinicians are not that uh, ex experts in reading just X-ray, I must say, because of this uh, contrast, uh, like because of the advent of latest imaging modalities like CT, MR, PET scan. So just, just X-ray has lost its significance. In, uh, <laughs> screening of the lung cancer. Mm, so it has less sensitivity and specificity for detection of uh, early stage lung cancer. So chest X-ray is not used nowadays. And sputum cytology, again, it is not mandatory that all uh, early stage lung cancer should uh, release those cancer cells in uh, respiratory pathway and they, uh, they should present in sputum. So again, uh, sputum cytology is not uh, as, as specific or uh, as, as sensitive um, tool for cancer screening. So, so then comes the latest and most sensitive and specific uh, mode of lung cancer screen that is low dose CT scan. So the why it is called low dose CT scan because it uses the radiation, the amount of radiation is one tenth to the normal diagnostic CT chest. So the amount of radiation is very less and uh, it, is a, it is a slow CT. Uh, so uh, we will have very high resolution uh, images of CT, like uh, chest CT. So the identification of the smaller lung nodules is highly possible with the help of Lodo CT. So Lodo CT is currently recognized as the mode of choice, like the, the investigation of choice for the screening of lung cancer. So uh, if you see the uh, data of, or if you see the literature from US Preventive Services Task Force, task force, uh, force they uh, conclude that the, the, the certainty, the sensitivity or specificity of the low dose CT is moderate. So uh, it has a moderate net benefit in certain group of people who are the so we will come to that next, but uh, it is directly rel uh, related to the, the benefit is directly related to the age of the patients, total cumulative exposure to tobacco smoke and years, of, years since quitting smoking. So these three factors are directly related to the amount of benefit we are going to get from this screening program. So, uh, so here, here comes the patient population of consideration. So, which patients we do screening? We screen those patients who are of age 50 to 80 years and who smoke back years. And currently they are smoking or have quit within the past 15 years. Even if the patient quit smoking 15 years, uh, 
before uh, 15 years we have to uh, like what we have to screen those patients if if we, if we stop smoking uh, more than 15 years like 16 years or 17 years then we need not screen those patients if they are not in the uh, age group